Hello everyone. There was little delay in starting today's class. So we are going to start it right now. So this is a quick, you know, recap about what all we have for today. Uh, this month, that is every morning at 8 a.m., you have this important gross anatomy topic with MCQs. And then again at 7 p.m., you have anatomy topic, that is either it's a gross anatomy topic or a histology topic. And then again um, at 10 p.m., that is quiz up, and that is with the good gross anatomy or a clinical anatomy topic. And today we are going to do the questions on the lower limb. So this is what we are going to do. Okay, so quickly. So we also have many things that is coming up. That is plus classes on 19, 20, 26, 27, and 29th. So mark these days because you are going to have a thorough anatomy class on these days. And it is going to be very interesting because we are going to have a lot of mnemonics and uh, many easy to crack questions. And uh, these questions are not easy, but how you make it easy by, you know, Getting the answer right is very important. All right, next one. What are the upcoming classes for this month? You have uh, classes like histology and uh, histopathology. So now you have this uh, blood vessels part 1, part 2, part 3. So part 1 and 2 is done already. Now part 3 will have mainly histopathology. So a lot of things you can get information from histopathology part 3 that is going to be tomorrow. 8th June. And then you have neuroanatomy where I'm going to cover the managers of the brain and the spinal cord. What is their extension and what is their importance? Everything we are going to look at. And then neuroanatomy spinal cord part 1 like you have part 2 and part 3 as well where we are also going to talk about lesions and other things. So basically, neuroanatomy is loaded with a lot of important things. So now here we have some limited time offer coming from Unacademy platform and that is Iconic subscription, PG Iconic subscription. If you avail 36 months of subscription, you get it for 58500 and then 24 months, you will get for 49500 where there is a price slash from 77,000 to 49,500. Similarly, 18, 000, 18 months subscription will be 45 and 12 months ka will be 40,500. And this is for those who are the first 500 students. So first 500 students will get this or they are the lucky ones to get this offer. You can use this promo code ROHINI and you can avail the 10% discount on your subscription. You can also get this 3 plus 1 offer, which is again the one month subscription is immediately added. It is extended. So it all together becomes four month subscription. It is done within the 30 days. And then you also have 12 months is. Now, 14 months because you get two months of free subscription. And all this is, again, with the 10% off on your subscription. So, this is for your medical PG preparation boost up. So, all this you can do. If you have already studied, you can think of going for at least three months so that you can, you know, get confidence to face the exam. And then you also have June to November Marathon, Target Me 2022. So that is going to be in the evenings and it has started from June 2nd. And this is going to go on for some time. 
and then you have here interactive classes with educators and preparation in depth ones and then test discussions and doubt clearing sessions and topics are covered and pdf notes are available for all the sessions that is held and if you have missed some classes you can always go back and see so you can also have a playlist of things that you are going to watch and watch it at your leisure later on and if you don't have an app this is how you download it that is called the learners app you can download it by going to the play store or the google store and the app store for iphone users and then you can go to the neat pg section and then from here you see all these educators your favorite educators listed and then you can watch the videos that is uploaded by them. you can see that there is anatomy physiology biochemistry all the topics are covered by very good educators with so many things to grab so all this is you can get a notification of all this provided you subscribe and also follow you can follow your educator so that you get all the benefit that you can avail and there is neat pg subscription plus iconic subscription so this is something that you should not miss because it is pocket friendly as well you get the no cost emi available on 6 month subscription and um, and above subscriptions and you can get for 36 month subscription you can pay 1250 per month so this is the amount that you will be paying every month it is not at once and it is a less amount and it is pocket friendly and you will also not feel burdened and similarly 24 months 18 months 12 6 3 all this subscriptions are available minimum you need to have 6 month subscription to get the emi offer and also you have to use the code r o h i n i in case you're going for the subscription to get 10% off on the total bill so this is a nice bargain because if you are still in your ug doing your third year second year and you still have two more years to go you will not only get very good basics and um, you know foundation for your pg entrance exams but also you will be clearing your ug with flying colors because you will have all this anatomy physiology pathology everything is covered here itself right so that is 1250 per month and you can also get the best of an academy as well as the prep ladder because there is a tie up with between these two and both the educators you can have access to and you can get live classes test videos and with lot of things to look forward to so with all this let's move the actual quiz that we were talking about we have this nice quiz that is lined up for you let's go with this now the first one first question here the question number 32 is what we are looking at this is the question number we are looking at right now Okay, the question says the sciatic nerve enters the gluteal region through which foramen? So there are one or two questions that must have overlapped, but uh, all the questions that we are going to discuss today will be new. So now here you answer this question: the sciatic nerve enters the gluteal region through which foramen? So in the hip bone, you have 
a foramen that is called lesser sciatic and greater sciatic. So you tell me which sciatic foramen it passes through because it is on the back side, the sciatic nerve. It's not in the anterior compartment. It is the nerve of the posterior compartment of the thigh as well as the leg. So you can guess which one is the foramen that the sciatic nerve passes through. Okay, 32 is B, greater sciatic foramen and the pyriformis is the muscle which divides this into upper and lower compartment. So, it passes through the lower compartment, not the upper, lower. Okay, along with which one? Along with the inferior gluteal nerve. Along with the inferior gluteal nerve. Okay, next we have the next question says the, the common peroneal nerve can be palpated in which region? A common peroneal can be palpated in which region? It is a nerve that is present supplying the lateral compartment and anterior compartment. So common peroneal nerve divides into superficial and deep. Deep is for dorsal compartment and superficial is for lateral compartment. So where do you think you can palpate? So it is something that winds around the lateral side of the neck of the pupilla. It is T. So 33 is T. You are right. So we have uh, SK mentioning it as C and um, Prakar Sharma is also saying it is C. And we also have um, 33A. Someone said A. Tony, I think you mentioned this question A in the last class also. I told you the two questions are repeated, right? And I think you were there in the last class and you said that it is again the medial side. Medial side is what side? Medial side of the fibula is facing tibia where you can palpate. The nerve, you cannot. It has to be on the lateral side. Okay. Next one. Okay, please look at this question that says if the dorsalis pedis artery is severe just proximal to its medial and lateral tarsal branches. One second. If the dorsalis pedis artery is Severe, just proximal to its medial and lateral tarsal branches, blood can still reach the dorsum of the foot through which vessel? So now you, who can answer this question? Let's see who has answered it. Okay, 34 is E, some peroneal artery. Is it E? How many of you think it's E? So is it? Peroneal artery, posterior tibial, medial plantar, lateral plantar. Looks like all of them, right? Looks like all of them. So 34E is correct. Tony is correct. 34E. So this is the answer. Next one. In children, the chief arterial supply of the head of the femur. Now, head of the femur and children is mentioned. See that clearly. Chief arterial supply of the head of the femur is derived from which artery? It is derived from which artery? 35. Thirty-five. Okay. Okay, Tony, you can answer the 35th one, 34th anyway. In a hurry. Yes. 35. 
fifth one? Which artery? It's a, it's a derived from which artery is written, but actually which artery supplies that? It is a nutrient artery. It is the nutrient artery. Now what happens is when there is this head of the femur and this is the head of the femur. I'll draw a small femur. It looks funny but yeah. This is the head of the femur and this is where you have this uh, plate. Okay. Now nutrient artery. What is the direction of the nutrient artery? Towards the elbow I go in for upper limb. Away from the knee, I flee. So it is going in the direction, the above direction. So it is going in the above direction. And uh, this epiphyseal plate is what is separating them. Right? So now the blood supply from the neck region, neck of the femoral artery may not be reaching the head of the femur. So in the chief arterial supply to the head of the femur is derived from the nutrient artery. Nutrient artery enters this. So you can see that femoral head has got this small foramen. You can see that is called a fovea. That is called fovea capitis. So nutrient artery passes through this fovea capitis and it supplies the head of the femur. So if there is a fracture at the neck, it can still sustain and prevent necrosis. Necrosis of what? Necrosis of the hip joint. That is the idea. So Prakar Sharma says 35. All of you are correct. All of you are correct because you are all saying it is 35A. Okay, next one. Thirty sixth one. Let's go to the next one. Which statement is correct? It is concerning the femoral ring. So, femoral ring is in which compartment? <coughs> which compartment do you think? Yes, Tony, that is called. Uh, he is talking about the previous one in the message that is called ligament of the head of the femur. Ligament of the head of the femur. The other name for that is ligamentum teres. See the same name is there in a ligament that is present in the liver. So ligamentum teres is present in liver as well. Don't get confused. So that is also correct. Ligamentum teres. But here also this is called ligamentum teres. Okay. So it is not round ligament, it is ligamentum, ligament of the head of the femur. Okay, 36C. Many people think 36C is the answer. Let's see. So it is proximal opening in the femoral canal. So it is proximal is towards the body. So there is this um, femoral you know, sartorius is present and then we talked about adductor longus. This is sartorius and this is the, what is the action of adductor longus? Adduction. What is the action of sartorius? One is abductor and also flexor of the hip just because it is placed obliquely. Okay, next. This one we were talking about, there are three things, one, two and three. This one is the medial most compartment. It has a ring here that is called femoral ring. That is called the femoral ring. Okay. So femoral ring is proximal. It is towards your body. It is not down. This is not the point and it is the point. So it is proximal opening in the femoral canal. So this compartment is medial compartment. It is also called femoral canal. Anybody knows what does it contain? What does it contain femoral canal? 
What is it contain? Femoral canal contains what? Yes, what is the name of the lymphatics? It is called Rosenmuller. Rosenmuller lymph nodes. That is the Rosenmuller lymph nodes. So this compartment, the medial compartment has lymph nodes and it is called Rosenmuller lymph nodes. Yes. The fossa of Rosenmuller is also present, but that is different. It is in the nasal cavity. But we are talking about Rosenmuller lymph nodes. Rosenmuller is also in two places. One in the nasal cavity, another one is in the femoral triangle. So again, it's confusing, right, Prakar? Yes. Yes, yes, okay. All right. So all of you are getting the things right now. We'll go to the next 37th one. Let's see the 37th one. To lift the left foot off the ground. So just think left foot off the ground while walking. Which of the following muscles plays an important? Which muscle? See if the left foot is off the ground. <clears throat> Which muscle should be strong? You're balancing on the right foot, right? So your right foot is stronger on the ground. That is because of which muscle? Which muscle? What is the function of D? Why do you think it is D? 37D? 37D is told by everyone. But why? What is the function of gluteus medius? What does gluteus medius do? Both medius and minimus. What do they do? They tilt the pelvis. Yes, they abduct the pelvis, but they also tilt the pelvis. Because when one foot is off the ground, the pelvis also you know, tilts. So the tilting of the pelvis is done by gluteus medius and minimus. Yes. Okay, next one. So this is the word you are supposed to use, tilting the pelvis. And next one, 36th one. Zishan, yes, you're right. Yes, Trendelenburg sign. You can test, check for the which nerve. Which nerve you are testing? Okay, now Tony, now that you told about Trendelenburg sign, you tell me for which nerve it is used. Which nerve test? We test the superior luteal nerve. It supplies... Not inferior. No, 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 no. It's superior gluteal. Superior gluteal is what supplies the gluteus maximus, sorry, minimus and medius. Superior supplies it. Yeah. Next. Rupture of the tendocalcaneus. Now move on to Zishan. Move on to 38th one and see the question. Okay, shift your Attention to 38th question. Rupture of the tendocalcaneus. Where is this tendocalcaneus? Near the ankle. <clears throat> Back of the ankle. Right? 
rupture of that. Many a times we get hit so badly on the tendocalcaneus. It is also called Achilles tendon, right? Achilles tendon. So what is that we can't do when we get badly hit? We can't do the ballet dancing, right? If someone is hit on this, ballet dance we can't do. <laughs> so what is that action? What action is that? Ballet dancers use what kind of movement? <coughs> what kind of movement they can't do? That is plantar flexion of the foot. So the posterior compartment helps in plantar flexion. So which muscle is forming this Achilles tendon? Tell me. There is this two muscles, right? One is the gastro Numius and soleus. They form Achilles tendon. But do you know that there is one more muscle plantaris? But even then we cannot do the plantar flexion. Why? Plantaris is there, but still we cannot do. Why? Inability to do plantar flexion. Why plantar plantar is not helping with the movement? Because it is a very weak flexor. And it may be absent in many of them. Many people may not have it. Plantar is something that is, you know, there is a lot of variations. It's a very weak muscle. It is a weak flexor. So plantar flexion you cannot do because it is a very weak muscle. So remember all of them are P here. Okay. So remember all this that is the answer. Next. Okay. Strained ankle resulting from excessive aversion. Now aversion is done by which compartment? Sprained ankle by doing excessive aversion. Most likely to demonstrate which structure is torn. See if the foot is turned like this. Can you see my hand? If the foot is turned like this. That is aversion. Look facing outwards is aversion. If it is like this. Which ligament is stretched? You try to turn your foot. Yes. Which one? What is the other name for deltoid? Deltoid is correct. Prakar is correct. What is the other name for deltoid? Medial ankle ligament. Medial, sorry, ankle ligament. Medial ankle ligament is also called deltoid ligament. Okay. So, how many slips are there? How many slips does it have? Medial one, it has three slips. Okay, medial one has three slips. And that is called the deltoid ligament. Okay, deltoid muscle is also there. Don't get confused. Why it is called deltoid ligament? Because of the shape. Alright, next question. Shall we move to? Yes, Dishan, you are right. 40th one. 40th one. If the foot is permanently dorsiflexed and averted. So, foot is permanently dorsiflexed and averted. Which nerve may be injured? 
dorsiflexion is done by which compartment? Which compartment? Dorsiflexion is done by anterior compartment, right? And what is the nerve supply? Deep peroneal nerve. Correct. Aversion is done by which compartment? Anybody? Lateral compartment. And it is supplied what? Which nerve? Aversion lateral compartment. It is applied by superficial peroneal nerve. Now, both of these are branches of common peroneal nerve. So, what is the answer now? So, the answer for the 40th one is D. That is Foot is permanently dorsiflexed and everted. Which nerve may be injured? So what is the answer for the 40th one? The answer is C or D? D. Okay. So this is this one. So this is the answer. Deep peroneal, uh, deep and superficial branch it gives. And this is the Next one, a femoral hernia, a femoral hernia, it is more common in uh, whom? Femoral is more, remember the F, okay? Remember this F, it is more common in whom? Which, see it has all these characteristics. You have to find the one which is wrong. That's why it is given except. So find out the wrong statement. Okay, wrong statement. Don't go for the right statement. It is wrong statement. So find out what is the wrong statement. It is more common in women than men. This is correct statement. Spelling occurs below the Cubic tubercle, is it correct? Femoral hernia. This is also correct statement. What about next one? It descends through the femoral canal, 48th one. Descends through the femoral canal. Correct. Is this correct? Its neck is related immediately lateral to the femoral artery. Is it artery? So what it should be? What it should be? Is it artery or vein? The answer is correct, but what is the correct thing? 48D is correct. That means this is a wrong statement. What is the correct statement? What is the correct statement? It is related to what then? If it is not artery, what else is there in the femoral triangle? There is artery, vein and the lymphatics. That's it. So if not artery, what else is there? It is medial to femoral artery. It should be medial to femoral artery. Or here instead of artery, it should be vein. Or here it can put it as medial. So either one you can change. Okay. Next one. I think we skipped one or two here. Oh, we skipped one or two here. Let's go back to the one which is on this side.
Let's, we are going back to the 41st question because we, we missed it. We missed it. We didn't see. We moved to the uh, 48th one. So we'll go to that one. 41. The femoral nerve arises from which of the following segments of spinal cord? Basically, they're asking you the root value of the spinal cord. This is same as the obturator nerve. So tell me what is the root value? So are you talking about 41, Prakar? Yes. L2, L3, L4. This is the root value of femoral. What are the other nerves? From this plexus. Anybody has any idea what are the other nerves? From the lumbar plexus. Plexus, what are the nerves? One is the ilio hypogastric. Then ilio inguinal. Then you have uh, lateral cutaneous. What else you have? Genital branch of genitofemoral. Then you have uh, femoral. And one more, obturator. So all these are the ones which are from the plexus, that is lumbar plexus. So how many of you have answered this right? How many of you got this right? Let's see how many of you picked the correct answer. We have a genitofemoral one person, uh, Prakar has said. You said this correct and then... Uh, Superior gluteal and inferior gluteal. What is the root value of superior gluteal? Cutaneous branch, that is genital. Genitofemoral is a cutaneous branch. Genitofemoral and then lateral cutaneous and all. Yes. These are not from this one. Gluteal muscles, the superior and inferior gluteal, it has got a different uh, you know, uh, root value. Who can tell me? <clears throat> what is the root value of superior gluteal? It is Lumbosacral, which is from L4, L, S1. So that is the root value of the superior and the inferior gluteals. So it is not lumbar plexus. It is lumbosacral plexus. It also involves along with the sciatic. That's why it is with the sciatic nerve. Sciatic also has the same root value, right? So sciatic and the gluteals have the same root value. So it does not come with the femoral or the obturator. These two, femoral and obturator is together. Sciatic and the gluteal nerves are together. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, let's go to the next one. You have to always clear your doubts then and there. When you have a small, you know, um, thinking in your head that uh, is it this one or that one, you have to sort it out immediately. Otherwise, you'll be carrying it to the next day and uh, next month and that goes on and you may forget that you had this doubt, right? So you should write down all your uh, questions that is not answered. So once you get it 100% right, then you put a tick next to that and you are done with it. Okay, so that should be the method. You should never have Y in your head. So that why, 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 why should 
go from your head right okay 42 let's go take this question maybe two more questions the dermatome present over the lateral side of the foot dermatome we are talking about dermatome so you think of the dermatomes of the foot lateral side this is lateral side of the foot so you are talk they are talking about little finger side little toe side which one 42 s1 is it 42 is it s1 sure for this we need a picture right we need a picture to prove this right now there is no picture in this but um, all of you are correct it is s1 so this is the 42 is c correct next 43 the femoral sheath is formed by which of the following layers of fascia? Femoral sheath has which of the following layers of fascia? Who can answer this question? L. L5 is not correct. Okay, Risha, your question, your answer is for which one? Which question? So, we are talking about the 43rd question now. Please mention the question number so that we know which one you are answering to. Femoral sheath is formed by which of the fascia? Is it fascia iliaca, fascia lata? 43. Fascia transversalis. Think, think, think. Femoral sheath. Fascia lata. What is fascia lata? All of you think it is fascia lata. No, no, it is fascia transversalis, fascia transversalis. So this is what contributes to the femoral sheath. Okay, this is one question which everyone got wrong. Fascia transversalis. So this, when we do this topic, we'll go in detail and uh, we will discuss this. Why it is fascia transversalis? We need a picture for this to show exactly what is the extension of fascia transversalis and what is fascia lata. Fascia lata is in the thigh region. Okay. Fascia over the iliotibial tract is fascia lata, yes. But iliotibial tract is formed by two muscles. One is tensor fascia lata plus gluteus maximus. It gives to iliotibial tract. It is tensor fascia lata. Okay. This is 40. Third one, the answer here is B, 43B. Okay, now one last question we'll see that is 44, 44 and then we are done. And the question is, which of the following muscles averts the foot, aversion of the foot is outside? If the foot is turned outside is aversion. So which muscles? Which compartment? Anybody has any idea which compartment muscles?
to the last thing. Who is answering this question for me? 44. Which of the following muscles does the aversion of the foot? Okay. Prakar says it is uh, D and Prabhu says it is C. Yes, the compartment is lateral, correct. Whoever said lateral is correct. Zishan says lateral compartment, it is correct. But what is the muzzle? Yes, they are peroneal muzzles. So there is, this is not the one, this is not the one, this is not the one. So there is only one peroneal muzzle here. The answer is before C. The peroneus longus plus peroneus brevis is in the lateral compartment. Peroneus tertius is in the anterior compartment. Okay. Peroneus tertius is in the anterior compartment. Okay, so with all these answers and discussions, I'm going to sign off and um, me, Dr. Arvo H-I-N-I. And we are going to have sessions like this every night at 10 p.m. Today's class at 7 was not, you know, uh, did not happen and it is rescheduled to tomorrow 7. That is blood vessels part 3. So I'm going to just discuss only the clinical aspects in the part 3. So you're going to talk about all these clinical aspects which you can list from the pathology um, section. We'll discuss tomorrow at 7 p.m. And it is um, a very nice exclusive class because so many, uh, you know, um, infections and uh, many, many things you learn at 7 p.m. I can't list them out. There are so many. So 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you. And uh, 10 p.m. is what usually we have this uh, session where uh, we have the quiz. So please join. And this is my name and my code is R-O-H-I-N-I. You can use this code to get the discount. And follow me at R-O-H-A-Q-U-A. -A. So when you follow, we feel connected, right? So please follow. Follow your educators so that we feel connected and uh, we can work out more on the quiz and we can, you know, discuss more questions. So subscribe and follow and uh, me here signing off. Thank you. Good night.